Goobies! Welcome back to another deck analysis video. I have filmed this video three times now, and although the deck works and I was winning games and it was all good, I knew I wanted to make changes to it and I wanted to give you guys like the finalized deck list that I was actually going to be using in person. So this is, I think, the finalized deck list. I think I've refined it to what I actually want. This is the deck I will be playing in person uh, as well as online. So let's get straight into this. My goobs! Woo! So I definitely did that thing where I play all my matches and everything and I totally forgot to do the deck analysis before all of this. So here we are, deck analysis. <laughs> um, I'm already in pajama pants because I was like, I'm done filming. Let me go get in some jammies, get comfy. But nah, here we are filming the deck analysis, the most important part of this video. Alright you guys, so here I have Alolan Ninetales, this is the deck. The full thing will be written out on my Patreon page if you guys would rather see it in writing as well. So your main attacker is going to be Alolan Ninetales. As you can see, the attack that Alolan Ninetales has does not require an energy. So you play this entire deck with zero energy, which is kind of a necessity because... If you had to play energy in this deck, I don't think it would be as viable as a deck if we're being 100% real. I think this is the best way to play it with zero energy. So you're playing zero energy, but you hit 10 damage for each tool card in your discard pile. So the whole entire purpose of this deck is to discard a lot of tool cards in your discard pile to hit an exceptional amount of damage and hit out your opponent's big, you know, tag teams or big prize cards and get the win. Obviously you need the Alolan Vulpix to evolve into the Alolan Ninetales. I use this one because it has Roar, which is another free to use move, and it allows you to switch your opponent's active with a benched Pokemon. They get to choose, but sometimes this can get you out of some sticky situations, so I like to use this Vulpix, uh, and it's 60 HP. We're also playing Rotoms in this deck, which I absolutely hate Rotoms, but they're a necessity in this deck because they have an ability, Roto Motor, which is if you have 9 or more more Pokemon tool cards in your discard pile, you ignore all of the energy costs of the Rotom's attacks. So each Rotom has different attacks and you don't have to use any energy to actually play them. I have one Psychic Rotom, this is helpful for weakness against other Psychic decks or Psychic Pokemon. You also hit for just a basic 120, so if you need to take something out that has 120 HP or less, that's helpful as well. Then we have Frost Rotom. Frost Rotom is super good against Charizards. I actually one hit a Charizard with this Frost because he is kind of like the Greninja Zorark dark card. He hits for 20 damage per energy on your opponent's board. So across their entire board, however many energies they have, multiply it by 20 and then also add the base 10 that the Frost Rotom hits as well. So he can actually hit for a significant amount of damage against any decks that have a lot of energies on their board. And then of course he hits weakness to fire Pokemon too, so he's good for that. Now last but not least, we have Wash Rotom. Wash Rotom hits 50 damage to a benched Pokemon. So it has to be a benched Pokemon. He does not hit the active, but he can come in really handy dandy when you're trying to take out a bench Pokemon or just finish off a bench Pokemon. He's very good for that. There's also Fan Rotom, which I took out of this deck, but if you want to tech in a Fan Rotom and maybe take something else out, I would strongly recommend that because it helps a lot for spread decks, one prizer decks, things that have a lot on the bench that you need to hit. It comes in so handy when you're going against Nuzzle decks as well. Fan Rotom hits for 20 in the active and across all of the bench bench as well. The reason I took it out was because I needed a little bit more damage to hit out larger Pokemon, which is why I opted for the Wash Rotom instead of the Fan Rotom. So I just like target one and hit it with the Wash Rotom for 50 instead of spreading 20 everywhere. And then of course we have the Blitzel Zeb Strike a line. I did run a 4-4 of this, but I switched it to a 3-3 because I think it's better that way. I think it's more than enough. I usually only run one Zeb Strike on my bench. Sometimes I get two, but most of the time my bench is filled up with other Pokemon or the Fione, and I only really want to sprint so many times. Like, yes, the secondary sprint does come in handy a lot of times, but most of the time you're gonna be milling your deck so much that you don't want to deck out, so you don't really want to sprint that much unless you need to get that damage into the discard. So I'm fine with one on my bench, two is okay sometimes, 
but I think a 3-3 line for both is super good. So what the ability on the Zep Striker does is once during your turn, you discard your entire hand and draw four cards. So if you have all tool cards in your hand, you just discard them, and that's damage into the discard, and then you draw four more. This comes in so handy when you're pairing it with supporters like Hapu and Ingo. This is essentially like a secondary supporter that you get to play and it's it's super super good in this deck. I ran this deck with the Denes and I found out that they were just too vulnerable being on the bench. They got custom catchered up, great catchered up, way more times than I would have liked and having those extra two prize cards you know with the knockout that your opponent gets on the Dedene is just gonna lose you so many games. So I actually recommend not using Dedene's in this deck, I just it didn't work for me, and I don't think it's as viable as a deck. Whereas the Zeb Strika is just so good, and it's consistent, and it doesn't cost you an extra prize card. So definitely, definitely would go with the Zeb Strika. I definitely would run a three three or a four four though, because a two two is just not enough. So Zeb Strika is going to be one of your main engines for discarding all of your tool cards. We also have Acrobike, which allows you to look at the top two and choose one. Ideally, you would look at the top two, grab a supporter, grab a Pokemon. Pokemon and discard a tool card with this. I do play one stadium and that is Wondrous Labyrinth. I was running a Marshadow to just discard the opponent's stadium, but I chose to switch it to Wondrous Labyrinth because yes, the Marshadow does discard a stadium, but I found that Wondrous Labyrinth actually helped me a lot more because it hindered the opponent, not allowing them to attack because their energy attack costs one more. So I think this is better than running a Marshadow in my opinion. I definitely would tech at least one or two stadiums because I've gotten caught in situations before where I had zero stadiums which is what I played before and black market came out and I was getting no prize cards off a dark deck where your opponent is using another prism star that is just really really good and is helping their deck exponentially and you want to be able to discard that so I think it's good to at least have one or two stadiums and this one is just super good in this deck then of course we have our charms and tool cards this is the bulk of the deck you're gonna be playing a lot of tool cards because each of these is 10 damage for your Ninetales to do. Definitely want to play a lot of fairy charms. If you guys don't know, these go on fairy Pokemon and then they prevent attacks from GX Pokemon that are that type or like ability charm if a GX has an ability or if a GX is an ultra beast, things like that. I have two electric just in case people are still playing Pigaroms and uh, other electric GXs. The Dragon One ADP decks, oh my gosh, it's so good. Same with the Guzzlord Naganadel. It's good against that too. Psychic, of course, for Mew Mew 2 and any other Psychic GX Pokemon, which there are plenty of. The ability is probably the most important. I run four of those because that's just... That one covers so many GX Pokemon, It's you have to run four of those. Ultra Beast, which covers like Nagatadel, Blacephalon, other Ultra Beast GX cards, super good. I play three of those. Giant Bombs, I play two of. These are really good for when you know you're gonna be getting hit with a lot of damage and you throw it on your Pokemon. It only lasts one turn, so if they hit you for that damage, they pretty much attack themselves as well. But it's also good to just kind of chuck on your Pokemon if you have no other way to discard, and they'll discard the next turn, which will stack against your damage. So they're just good all around to have. Hustle Bolt actually comes in super clutch for when you know that they can't get the guaranteed hit on you, you're going to have a little bit of HP left. If you have 30 HP left or less, you hit for 60 more damage, so it's just a damage stacker that works really well in this deck. And then we have Choice Helmet, which just allows you to take 30 less damage from any GX Pokemon, which is also really good. And this one doesn't have to be on a Fairy Pokemon, it could go on any of your Rotoms or anything like that. That's another thing you have to remember, the Fairy Charms only go on the Alolan Ninetales, they don't affect any other Pokemon, so that's only for your nine tails. I play three escape words. These are pretty much a necessity as well in this deck for when you start with a Rotom or start with a Blitzel and you have to retreat them in order to attack with your nine tails. So anytime you start with something that you can't retreat, you need to use the escape board because you have to remember you're not playing any energy so you cannot hard retreat. So if your dude's stuck up in the active and they can't attack you or something, you might just like deck yourself out if you have no way of retreating. So they can just not attack you forever and you lose. So always have your escape boards. Make sure you're careful with not discarding these for when you need them. Next we have Hapu, which is one of my favorite supporters in this deck. You look at the top six cards of your deck and then you put two of them into your hand and discard the rest. So ideally you'd be picking two Pokemon, two 
few cards that you need, maybe get an ability charm that you need to attach, and then discard the rest of your charms to stack your damage. Tapu is usually when I hit my Alolan Ninetales off, which is why I don't play Pokecoms. I just try to mill my deck as much as I can, and then Hapu into the inevitable Alolan Ninetales that's probably going to be somewhere in that top six. So it usually works very well for that. Then we have Ingo and Emmett, the much more risky supporter in this deck. I say that because it discards your entire hand. So if you have all tool cards, but then a card that you really want to keep, you're going to have to discard that card no matter what, unfortunately. But it does discard your tool cards really well. And then you actually get to look at the top card of your deck and decide if you want to take the top five of your deck or the bottom five of your deck. So you kind of get to glance at where you're going to get and then gamble on what you think is going to be better, the top or the bottom. This card does come in super clutch in this deck, especially with the Zeb Strike as Sprint because you can usually like get your top five and it's a bunch of tool cards and then you just sprint them out and then draw another four. The engine is really, really smooth and I really dig it. Next we have Professor Oak's setup. I only run one of these and it's really good for when you get him in the beginning or early game. And then it's also very good for when you're struggling end game or when you kind of know what you need out of your Pokemon. If you need a Vulpix or if you need to grab a Rotom, uh, if you need your Psychic Rotom, things like that, or grab a Blitzel, you can grab three of any type. So you'd be grabbing either your Frost, Wash, Fione, or a Vulpix, and then the Blitzel and the Psychic Rotom as well. If you do play Fan Rotom, this is also good for that as well. But like I said, I only run one of these because I don't need a ton of them. I just kind of need him in those moments where you need him. I also run one Sightseer. I just added this in and it's helped me a ton. I would honestly tech in more of these if you want to switch some stuff around because it's a really good card in this deck. You just discard all of your tool cards with it and then you draw till you have five. So a lot of times if you don't want to discard your entire hand, if you want to keep a Pokemon in your hand to evolve next turn or something, this is so good to still get that damage in the discard, draw more cards, but still have that card that you need it to keep. Last supporter I have, which is honestly the most important in my opinion, and I have not seen any other lists that play this supporter, which I was so confused about because because this supporter is so good in this deck. It is a lifesaver in this deck. I think it's a necessity in this deck. I run two of them, and I think that's more than enough. So what this does is gets three Alolan Pokemon out of your discard. So when your Alolan Ninetales and Vulpix get knocked out, you can just get them back immediately with this card. On top of that, if you already have a Vulpix on the bench and it's been chilling there, your other Ninetales and Active gets knocked out, you just pull it out right away and you instantly have another Ninetales prepared. So it is so good in this deck. Necessity, definitely use it in your list 100%. So that's the entire deck. There are tons of variations of this deck. So if you guys have any recommendations or if you think something else would work better, I might even be taking out my Psychic Rotom to switch it with a Fan Rotom. I don't know. I'm still kind of debating it, but I haven't got to utilize the Psychic Rotom in the way I've wanted yet, but I think he might come in clutch in Psychic matchups, but I just haven't gotten a chance to use him yet. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any recommendations or anything, just let me know. This is kind of my base list. I might expand off of it later, but this is what I'm playing right now. So I hope you guys enjoy the matches, and I'll catch you later. Okay, Goobies, hopping in to this today with our Tail Babies. Tail Babies, that's what we're calling this deck. We're rolling with that. Let's see how it goes. So it looks like we have Dragon and Psychic is what this broski's playing. Let's go heads. Come on. No. I always lose the coin flip. No matter what. It sucks. Ooh, he's letting me go first though. Oh, I dig it. I dig it. Wow, this is a solid first hand. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start with Bullpix. Let's go Blitzel. Frost over to the bench. Yo, I'm digging this right now. Digging it, digging it, digging it. Discard any number of cards and draw until you have five. I just added this in here, so... Mulligan. Okay, so they mulligan once. I didn't really look at what they had besides a bunch of energies. I think I saw beast energy in there, so we'll see. I'm definitely going to take that mulligan. Ooh, we got a wash rotom for the bench. Yay! Sweet. Okay, I dig this. I dig this. I'm so down to go against this Guzzlord card because I do have dragon charms, so that is hype. Uh, I think I'm going to save this Sightseer for next turn, so we're just going to pass. We're going to pass here. Next turn, we're going to evolve into the Zeb Strika, the Ninetales, discard the Ringing Bell, draw some cards, be able to play whatever we can out of those cards. Um, we might actually even... I don't know, actually. I don't know if I want to Sightseer. 
I guess we should. The site's here to see what we get, I suppose. And then if I really don't want to, I don't have to sprint. Just in case I don't want to lose what's in my hand. But okay, so we got a fairy... Uh, sorry, not a fairy. A psychic fairy charm <laughs> of that. Uh, the Miss Magius, if you guys just missed that, Miss Magius, like, discards itself. Um, allows you to draw till 7 and discards itself and gives your opponent a prize card. So you might be like, whoa, cool, they're giving you free prize cards. But it's just so that they can use beast rings because uh, you have to have four I think I think it's like four or less or something prize cards to use beast rings so they're pretty much just giving themselves an advantage by giving you prize cards but little do they know it actually helps my deck out a lot giving me extra prize cards so I'm happy with that <laughs> we're gonna acro bike first and here we go that's exactly what I wanted the dragon um, so we're going to throw the ja Dragon Charm, so he will not be able to hit us with either of his Guzzlords. Uh, we might see Resign, honestly, out of this. We're going to discard both of these Charms for another couple of cards. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely not going to sprint this hand because I don't want to discard all of this. So we're going to toss... Um, I think I'm going to wait, actually, to see what I get in my next hand. So let's just attack for a little tiny bit of damage. It does hit weakness, so we have three cards in the discard, but we're still hitting for 60 because of weakness. So now, our little dragon player is in a pickle here. Oh! <laughs> I was kind of... Man, I'm kind of bummed that they resigned, because, I mean... We definitely probably would have won that, so I, I wasn't expecting them to stick with that too long, but there we go. First game. That's a win. <laughs> Let's head into game number two. Yay! So as you saw from that first game, you know, if you have the right charms, you can get easy resigns. I played a Pikaram last night. I attached an electric energy charm. Um, or sorry, an electric Pokemon fairy charm, and they just like instant resigned. They were like, nah, bra, I'm out. Because they really had no attackers. They had the Raichu Raichu, Picaram, and a Dedene, which are all electric GXs. So they couldn't attack me with anything. They had already used Tapu Koko. They had no attackers. So they're like, well, that's a game over. Okay, come on, heads! <gasps> Yay! We won this time! Would I like to go first? Yes, I would like to go first. Thank you very much. That was a really good starting hand last time. Um, not a horrible starting hand this time. Still not really the best, though. So I'm going to start with Wash Rotom, I suppose. And then we're going to throw Volpix on the bench. So this could be a very sticky situation if we do not get a supporter card. We need a really good top deck. Oh, yes. Okay, Hapu. I needed that a lot. Uh, kind of needed a Blitzel there. Not horrible, though. I'm gonna go Blitzel and Acrobike for this one. Because we can evolve next turn into Ninetales, which is good. I need a Blitzel. Yes! Oh my goodness! <gasps> Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Big brain plays. Professor Oak setup. Bruh. Oh! No, I already played a supporter! Oh, why did I do that? No. We could have been, oh my God, that was such a bad play. Wow, I didn't even think about that. I already played the Abu Red. Okay, so that was a total mess up on my part. What I should have done there is take the Blitzel <laughs> to get the Blitzel out this turn to be able to evolve next turn to be able to discard this entire hand with Sprint. Now we're gonna have to profos Professor Oak set up to get a Blitzel. We will get a couple extra things, but we won't be able to sprint because we can't evolve into Zub Shrika, which is not good. So, bada bing bada boom, this is very bad. <laughs> Luckily, we do have a Psychic Charm, so that's good. And we have an Ability Charm, which is nice. So, I'm glad I noticed that before I just discarded them. Uh, <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, I think, here. Since we're seeing a lot of Mew Mew 2s, that seems to be probably his main attacker, is the Mew Mew 2s, that's what this deck is. So if we throw an Ability Charm and a Psychic Charm, or I guess either one. I mean, we might as well do Ability Charm. No, because I guess he could... No, why would he play Power Plant? I was like, oh, he could just play Power Plant, take away his ability, but why in the world would he be playing Power Plant? <laughs> I have no idea. So I think we'll just chuck Ability Charm onto our Ninetales here, um, so that... It cannot be hit by the Mew Mewtwo and potentially other Pokemon that they might play. I guess we could see what comes out with this tag call if it goes onto his bench. 
Because anything he discards, he has to hit me with the Mew Mewtwo from the discard. So I think we could still win this despite my horrible, horrible misplay. Uh, I regret that. I'm so, so sad I have to upload that. <laughs> People are going to be like, Boo, you already played as a border. And I'm just like, big brain plays. Psych. Oh man, that was so bad. I hate myself. <laughs> okay, we can still rescue this. I believe. I believe Giant Earth is good for me because I just discard my charms. <laughs> it's actually pretty solid. Like, yo, let me discard the this charm right quick. Same with Viridian Forest. I use Viridian Forest to discard a lot too. All right, here we go. So, Ibao. Ability charm. Professor Oak set up for a Blitzel. We're going to get the Rotom out as well, and then we're going to get another Volpix. So, boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Vega boys, baby. All right, and then let's throw another ability charm. I almost put that on the Blitzel. On the Volpix there, and then we're just going to pass. So we'll be able to evolve next turn. Then we're going to sprint this hand away, and then hopefully get another Ninetales to evolve into. I'm not even worried about this Wash Rotom right now. He's just kind of chilling. He's chilling up there. If we get an escape board, I guess we could attach it to retreat him. Uh, hopefully we don't see a custom catcher. Uh, custom catching up our nine tails that would be bad actually no it wouldn't be bad because he's currently protected so i think he would probably custom catcher up the volpix at that point also we're playing the psychic rotom to hit psychic weakness which as you can see this takes weakness to psychic very nice all right we see the tag purge baby we're gonna throw up his nine tails because he cannot attack us so we are safe and then we're going to see a nice little Zeb Striker action. We're going to see a nice little sprint. Sprint away. Sprint, Zeb Striker. Run through the fields. Yes. Sick. Nice. Needed that. Acrobite. Boom. Ooh. Do we take the giant bomb? Or the bell? What do we have in hand? I don't think it really matters. Let's take Giant Bomb. It literally doesn't matter at this point. I might as well just throw it on. Just for the memes. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to Rubbish Blizzard for not that much. 70. <laughs> but that's okay. We're slowly chipping away at this Mew Mew too. He can't hit me, so I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Alright, we got Chaotic Swell. Wondrous Labyrinth is gonzo. But that's okay. Because I didn't need him anyway. And what's cool about this is that if, if he for some weird reason did play power plants, um, he would just eat his own power plants. So I don't mind the Chaotix Will being there. I have no other supporters. Or I mean, sorry, stadiums, not supporters. That'd be bad if I had no support. <laughs> I mean, I have no other stadiums. So I'm cool with this just chilling. Just a casual little tornado hanging out <laughs> on the playing field. No worries. All right, I'm curious to see what he does here. Um, I'm pretty sure, can he go through tool cards with a Pokemon? No, I don't think he can. There is a Pokemon, I think it's what, is it Greninja? Or something, some Pokemon that goes through tool cards. I'm pretty sure it's Greninja, but he doesn't have one of those, so we're good. We are good. He's like, oh no, I just hit you and it did nothing. Rip. I think, I think he meant to do that though, because he just used the move where he gets energies. Oh no, what? I don't know what move he actually just used. I was not paying attention there. <laughs> oh no! Okay, we're going to sprint. Even though I wanted that Zeb Striker, but that's okay. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. That's going to be a good sprint for next turn. Woo! We're going to hit for a little bit more damage. We got 100 now. Hondo 70, slowly chipping away. <laughs> I'm so curious to see what he does here. So if he had a Greninja, I'm pretty sure the Greninja hits through my tool cards. Um, he's going to switch and heal. Is that what this does? Yeah, so he's going to heal himself up. He's playing that long con, bro. He's like, yo, I'm just going to deck you out. And I'm like, yo, I got Fiona, though. <laughs> Hopefully. I saw the Fiona in there, so... The Fiona is in deck, so it's not prize, which happens more than you than you think. All right, we got Venom Shot. Oh, he's gonna attack my bench. That's not good. Venom Shot to the bench. He's probably gonna go for the Volpix, or maybe in the Zip Striker. Yeah, dang, that's not good. Yo, when did he get the Naganadel in there? When did that happen? 
I didn't see that happen. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay, so we took out our sub Strika. He's slowly just going to start Venom shotting our bench, which is not good. And now we cannot trade this away because we no longer have the sub Strika. Dang, that's not good at all. Uh, man, we're just using. We're just getting charms on charms. Alright, we're just going to have to hit him for 100. And hope for the best here. Uh, he's just gonna continue to Venom Shot my bench, which is quite sad. Don't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> but... It happens. I'm hoping he doesn't play Greninja. Cause even if he Venom Shot, like, my entire bench, he still wouldn't have enough prize cards? So... I could just slowly kill him <laughs> with my Nine Tails. <laughs> that sounds goobery, but I mean... It's a possibility! <laughs> Okay, we're gonna be rolling with like no bench. This is actually so goobery. We're either gonna, oh man, hopefully we top deck something good and start hitting for more damage right now because we might be able to win if that happens. I need more damage. I need more damage output, please. He's discarding a lot of energy with that Venom shot though, so hopefully he just like runs out of energy. <laughs> That'd be sick. Okay, come on, Acrobite, don't fail me. Yes, yes. I needed a Hapu. I need some stuff. Give me stuff. All right, we're gonna take Ingo, and we're gonna take. Dang, like, do I even want to put more stuff on my bench? I don't. I really don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I guess we'll take another charm so we can just Ingo it away. That's hopefully the best option there. Alright, and we're just gonna hit for 130, so we will get the knock on that broski. So we're gonna get three cards off that, hopefully all- dang, that's not good. I wanted to Ingo- I mean, we're gonna Ingo! It's gonna be a thick two C's Ingo there. Lots of charms going in the discard. It's 10 energy per charm, so it's gonna add a lot of damage, which is good. But we're also getting rid of another supporter, but honestly we have 12 cards left, so... Like, who even cares at this point? Alright, he's he's gonna march out of his own broski to get himself giant hearth, to get himself some energies, because he's a struggling! Was that a Terrace Ball? Yeah, for another Dedede? What, he's gonna discard this whole hand? Man, he probably has a lot of Pokemon in that hand. If he's Dedene changing. <laughs> this is a weird game. I don't like this game. I don't know if I'm gonna win or lose here. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. He attached an energy. Is he gonna attack me with the Dedene? Is that what is about to happen? Is he gonna GX me? <laughs> I have an ability charm. Oh! <laughs> I think he, he thought it was a psychic charm. I'm like, bro, I have an ability charm. <laughs> Ah, victory of the charms! Yo, these charms are helping me quite a bit here. Quite a bit. I'm winning solely on these charms. I dig this. I dig this. <laughs> All right, Goobs, let's jump into a game three. I'm scared here. I feel like we've been getting kind of lucky because I'm like, man, we're definitely losing this. But then somehow we clutch it with the charms and it's okay. All right, this is a fire deck. So we're definitely going to have to utilize our Frost Rotom. Uh, because that helps a lot with fire decks. Hopefully it's not Blacephalon. I don't want a Blacephalon. Please don't be a Blacephalon deck. No! <laughs> We're gonna start with Vulpix and Active. And then these Goobers on bench. Oh, I'm happy we got an Ingo there. That's a pretty good card for this hand. Oh, they mulliganed. Cool. Let's see what's in his... Alright, what do you got? What do you got? Wow. Oh, he's playing Camrupt. And... Is it an Arcanine? Deck? I have no idea what this is. Ooh, he mulliganed three times. Ooh! Ooh! Yeah, I'll throw that Vulpix down. Three mulligans. Wow, that's quite a bit. Camrupt. Cam Camrupt? Is that... Was I saying that right? The Camrupt? I don't know. I don't know what this is. He's a Poke Master, you guys, so watch out. <laughs> Poke Master gonna get ya! I'm scared. I don't like unknown decks because I always feel like I'm like... I don't know what your plan of attack is. Okay, so yeah, we see the Camrops, Arcanine, 
I see Arcanine hit for what, like 120 for a lot of energies? That was a lot of energies that I saw in his attack move. A lot of energies. Where I'm playing no energies. I'm just chilling. Okay, so now I'm looking at my hand here. What do I want to do here? I guess we could sightseer these bros out. Keep the Ingo. Draw extra cards. Wondrous Labyrinth switch. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do so I don't waste the sightseer. I want to utilize as many supporters as I possibly can. So if I Ingoed, I would just discard this hand, including the sightseer. Whereas if I sightseer, I could discard the charms, but still have the Ingo to discard charms next round. So we don't have a Blitzel lined up. There's no sight of a Zeb Strika at the moment. So we're chilling right now. All right, so we're going to sightseer. And discard all these goobers. So bye bye charms. See you later. And Fiona on the bench. Cool, we got a hapu for next turn. Solid. Um and yeah, we're just gonna pass, I guess. Yep. We're gonna pass here. I guess I could have done roar. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, my Volpix does have a move that is no energy required. And it just switches their active Pokemon, which I guess I could have done. That may have been the jam. I don't know. What's he gonna do to me? What does this do? This camera up. Tackle? Oh, psych? No. Discard two energy from this Pokemon and hits for 50? Wait, what? Did he select the wrong move? Oh no. Either he selected the wrong move, or he didn't want to discard his energy. I'm not really quite sure what happened there, but that was struggle bus looking. Okay, we're gonna take the Blitzel and the Frost Rotom. Oh my gosh. No. No. I kind of need both, but I want the Acrobike. Because I need a Ninetales. Oh man, what do we do here? Frost Rotom hits weakness. I can't pass up the Frost Rotom. I'm passing, I'm passing on the Blitzel. I'm passing on the Blitzel for the off chance we get a Ninetales off the Acrobike. This is scary. Okay, Frost Sword on the bench. Ninetales, Ninetales, Ninetales. No! It's okay, I'll attach your ringing bell, so at least it'll confuse him. Uh, man, that's bad. I was really hoping on a Ninetales there. <laughs> oh no, he couldn't use his, uh, his Strong Flare because of Wondrous Labyrinth. I was wondering why he didn't use it, but he actually couldn't use it, so that's why. I was confused for a second there, but I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see another tackle for the knockout and the confusion on himself there. Uh, we do not have enough in the discard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, we need one more in the discard for the Frost Rotom to be able to attack. Man, how much HP do these have? 90? Dang. Yeah, let's let's throw a frost at him, and we'll get the knock on this camera up. And we'll also, please get a nine tails, please. Oh my god, Bruh. Acrobike. Yes, the Blitzel. I thought I already had the Blitzel <laughs> for a second. I was like, I already have a Blitzel, but no, I passed the Blitzel. Okay, so we got a Blitzel. We're gonna Acrobite nine tails, nine tails. Yes. Okay, needed that. Needed that. We got the nine tails out. Very good, very, very good. Okay, and then we are going to hit my broski here for weakness. Yay! Our camera 180, baby! Just enough to hit you out. We got an ear ringing bell off of that. We'll probably attach that to the frost room if he doesn't die next turn. Not really sure how he would die. I'm guessing he's just using welders to accelerate his fire energies, and it's just a one prizer deck. So, if we could just starve him of his energy, just play it out, make sure he starves his energy. I mean, he's got Brock's Grit, so he's getting those energies back, but will he be able to attach them enough times? That is a question, and I don't think he will be. Uh, we don't have a Ninetales, so that Aether is kind of useless to us right now. Let's put Ear Ringing Bell on our Broski. Let's Hapu. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another Ninetales. Yes, yes. So our Watch Rotom doesn't hit for weakness because he only hits Bench, and Bench isn't affected by weakness. But now our Bench here is pretty legit at the moment. And we're going to hit this Numel out as well. So here we go. Bye-bye, little buddy. Oh, no, what? I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I totally forgot. 
that the Frost Rotom's attack is based on the amount of energy that is out. <laughs> he like, he's still put a sad face. Dude, can I just remember my own Pokemon's attacks, please? Just for like two seconds, please. Okay, we're gonna go with an Ingo. Dang, do I want the Nine Tails? No, nah, I'll take bottom cards so I can just sprint away a bunch of charms here. Oh man, still not really what I wanted here. Dang, this is sad. Alright, so we're just gonna have to frost crush away until this new mole gets jacked up. <laughs> I mean, he's die he doesn't die until he has 90 damage. Oh gosh, this could be bad actually. This could, this could be quite bad. And we just discarded our other uh, frost rotom. But I mean, we'll be hitting enough damage with our nine tails anyway, so that's not too big of a deal. He got rid of my Wondrous Labyrinth finally. That stayed up for quite a while there, actually. I totally forgot it was even there. All right, so we got Giant Hearth out now, so he's going to have some energy acceleration for his welders, his welder bros. We're going to see those broskies doing some work here. Here we go, here we go. Do it, do it. Welder broski. His dude here hits for 190 and does 50 damage to itself. Yo, that's solid. I need that extra damage. But he's probably gonna attack still with the camera ups, I guess. Oh my gosh, he's confusing himself too. Well, this is goobery right now. <laughs> okay, we have seven cards left. Um, and we're hitting for what, 30 times weakness, so 60. So actually, we'll hit him out now, right? Yeah, okay, so we do get the bomb. Oh, so, wait, what? 100? <laughs> wait, how many energies did he have out? <laughs> how? What? <laughs> I don't know how many energies he had out. I thought he only had one, and I do times 20, right? Plus 30, because the base 10. How did that hit for 100? I don't know. Was there energy that I didn't see? Did he have an energy on the little turtle? <laughs> I don't know, bro. I'm like half not even paying attention here. Okay, we're gonna see Welder onto the Arcanine. Probably about to see a knock on our Rotom. If he doesn't knock the Rotom, no, he's gonna knock him out. He hits for 120, but he will confuse himself, but he's gonna die anyway next turn, so does it really matter? Probably not. <laughs> I guess we could actually toss- wait a second. We could toss the washer on him up and just attack his bench. That'd be funny. <laughs> attack his bench with the washer on him. <laughs> we could also use our Fiony to make him switch. I don't know why though. I kind of just want to discard more of his. Like you only have so many welders, you know. Unless he's getting them back somehow. But he's got four in his discard right now, so ain't no way he's accelerating energies after this bad boys. Unless he gets those welders back. So I'm cool with that. So we're going to put our nine tails up. That is the jam. Right about now, and we're we're hitting him. We should be hitting him for more than enough. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's the knock. <laughs> that's more than the knock. I don't really want to throw anything on my bench right now. So, uh, actually, I could just giant hearth away this dragon charm for another little extra bit of energy. Might as well. And then we're gonna rubbish blizzard this bad boy till death. One ninety on that arcanine. We're gonna take an acro bike. Six cards left in our discard. We're just gonna keep giant hearthing away our uh, our charms here. Not that it matters. We're hitting everything he has out currently. So that's cool. He needs another welder, which he doesn't have. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna win this one. Pretty sure we're gonna win this bad boy. Unless something somehow goes horribly wrong. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but it could happen. <laughs> Not really sure how, <laughs> but we will see. These rogue decks, you never know what's up their sleeve. Alright, what are we doing? Did he just discard a giant hearth for the giant hearth? I think he did. Does he have a welder? How? No, he doesn't have a welder. Okay. I was about to be like, wait, what? <laughs> Green's exploration. What you getting, big boy? What you getting now? Mr. Pokemaster. Sometimes I'm like, I wonder if these people watch my videos and they're like, dang, she just roasted me. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to roast you guys. It's just it's just fun, competitive. Like I lose all the time. Roast me all you want, boys. <laughs> oh, okay, we got a buff pack. Oh, I see what he's doing here. Wow, why is camera up so big? Why does he have so much retreat? How how much do you weigh? Four hundred pounds? Holy! <laughs> is that what that says? Dude, I'm pretty sure it says he's 400 pounds. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, we're gonna giant hearth out this psychic charm. For no energy. We're gonna acrobike. For an acrobike. I don't know why I did that. I'm just discarding more hearts. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna attack. <laughs> um, I hope this is enough damage. This gives him like, what, plus 50 HP? Plus 50. Dang. Let's acrobike for another charm. Come on, baby! Discard that helmet. Get out of here. I mean, I guess we could actually just force him to switch into the Arcanine. Dang. How much am I doing? 30, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110, 20, 80, 90, 200, 10. So that sh should be enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sick. Oh, did he already have damage on him as well? I'm pretty sure he did. Okay, so this should be the win. I don't know if I'm not seeing something that this bro's seeing. But I don't see how he's about to get four energies on here and get four prize cards. <laughs> like, broski, you're out of welders. There's no more welders. He's gone. He says, well played. Oh, thanks for letting me take the win, broski. I'm glad he didn't resign. Oh, what a good sport. Thank you, Pokemaster. You're the bomb diggity junior. Nice. Taking that. That W. I almost was like that V for victory, but W. <laughs> Taking that D dub. <laughs> All right, sick. I mean, we might as well play one more, I guess. Like, I haven't lost yet, and I feel like we should kind of show an example of how we lose with this deck so let's play one more because i feel like my luck couldn't go too long so <laughs> let's get into another one i don't know if you guys like these videos being shorter or longer but this is i don't know those first two games i feel like were somewhat fast so maybe we'll be okay it says i have the advantage somehow for this i don't know what i'm playing against here kako kako welcome to the battle arena kako Hopefully, you watch this someday on YouTube, and you're like, wow, this chick's super weird. <laughs> Man, look at that, that mulligan. Ooh, three hapus in my dreams. He's going to see my cards and be like, oof, I know what she's playing. All right. Yeah, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Okay, so wait, why am I looking at my own mulligan? All right, Vulpix for lead here, Blitzel on bench. I was like, what did I mulligan? <laughs> I already looked at it. Boo, you're so silly. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a Keldeo. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Okay. Let's throw another Blitzel on the bench. Might as well. Uh, Sightseer for these two. Yeah, because neither of those apply. So, yeah, those two. Draw. Man, I just added that Sightseer and it's actually going quite well for me so far. Uh, and then pass. Wow, we actually did get three hapus. <laughs> Yo, what's up with this algorithm giving me mad hapus right now? We had three hapus in our mulligan hand, now we got three more hapus. I dig it. Okay, so we see a water volcanian, a whoopy boy, and another whoopy boy. So we're gonna see some quagsires, we're gonna see some Nagatadel, uh, we're gonna see some Keldeo action. Not gonna sprint here. I'm gonna hapu because I don't want to waste a bunch of hapus. Uh, do any of these apply? We need an ability charm, which none of those are. So, yeah. Let's discard those. And also need to acrobike into a nine tails. Uh, that works too, I guess. I need a nine tails though, for real. Where my nine tails at? So we need an ability charm and we need a nine tails. So we're gonna do one more hapu and then if we still don't get what we need, I'm just gonna sprint away the other hapu because I need to get the cards that I need. So 
we're okay so far. He doesn't have any water in his discard, so he can't, like, charge up his Keldeo with the Quagsire. So we're still good for another turn. Oh man, two Zeb Strikers? Don't mind if I do. Hapu for you! I needed a Vulpix. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that Zeb Strike. I'm just gonna discard him, because I already have two, so... Bye-bye, Zebby Burry. Thanks for coming to the party. Come on, Night Tails. Nice. Oh, dang, I need the ability charm, though. <gasps> oh! Have I discarded any? Dang. Man, how are you gonna do me like this, Acrobike? Ah. Oh. I'm gonna go with the Nine Tails and then hope we get another ability charm. That's all we can do here. So, I think we probably will. We probably will. So, let's sprint. Let's do our first sprint. Ability charm. Ability charm. Wow, that was horrible. Uh. <laughs> what the heck is this? I don't want this. Okay. I'm just gonna sprint again. Actually, we're just gonna do some sprint action here. Oh my gosh, come on, broski! Where's my ability charm at? No! Oh, this is bad. Okay. That's okay, because we have an Aether, so if we get knocked out, we'll be aight. Uh, I might as well just... Yeah, let's just hit. 120? Okay, okay. That's decent. What is this, like, turn two? Is that turn two? Was that turn two? No, I think it was turn three. 120 by turn 3? Not, not too shabby. Not too shabby. I will take it. This Keldeo is about to be sweating it. He's like, dang, I'm about to get hit out. What am I about to do? <laughs> Wait, what is he doing? Oh, no. You gonna make me choose like this? What's he about to hit me for? 110? Hmm. I'll just throw him up a Vulpix because I have an Aether, so I don't really care. And I have one in my hand, so go ahead, bro. Hit that Vulpix. What are you gonna do to my little Vulpix? Oh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I got my ability charm. Uh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Hmm. <laughs> Let's throw the ability charm on the active Ninetales. And then, uh, dude, did we already discard an Aether? No, we haven't. So we could discard this Aether and still have another Aether. Could be in the prize cards though. So it's like, do you wanna risk that? Because I need an escape board or another nine tails. Yeah, F it. Let's risk it. Risk it for the biscuit. That could be a horrible mistake. We got the escape board. Holla! Holla! So we go on a skateboard. Into my boy. We're also just, honestly, let's just sprint again. Why not? You know? Get another nine tails out there. Okay, or not. That works too. Um, got another aether, so that's good. Cool. I'm, I'm cool with this, actually. So we're gonna hit this Keldeo out. Sorry, Keldeo. Bye-bye. Have a good day. And take two prize cards. He also needs more energy still if he wants to hit me with any of his bros. Unless he switches out that Wondrous Labyrinth. He's only got three cards, so he's kind of struggle blessing right now. What you gonna do? Oh! Is that a Lysander's Labs? Wow, that's bad. Oh! I was scared there because I was like, oh no, he just lies there and labs me. None of my tool cards work. But I guess he knew I was going to hit him out anyway with my nine tails, like anything. The thing is, in that setup, like, he, he wouldn't have enough energy to recharge his bros in time. Because I would have been hitting him for a significant amount of damage, like 200 damage to anything. Uh, and then he just, he was screwed, so. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I was expecting to lose that. I feel like we need to play another one. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if I play another one, it's gonna be a really long video. Ooh, snap. All right, Goobies, we're just gonna call that there because I feel like if I play another round, it's gonna be a really long video and we still might win another round. So I can't just play until I'll lose, even though I really want to show you guys like how this deck does lose because I do lose matchups. Um, you know what, actually, let's just do it. Let's just play another one. <laughs> you know what, whatever. <laughs> let's just play another one. Okay, ooh, could this be the mirror match? I see fairy. Fairy and colorless. No, nah, it's probably not the mirror match. It's probably Gardevoir. Sylveon. What would the colorless be? Would I like to go first? Heck yeah, I want to go first. Oh my gosh, this person's name is Oathmeal. Like oatmeal? That's so cute. Oh, wow. So... This is actually really good or really bad. I don't know. Because we got an Ingo, so we can discard all these charms. 
but like we have nothing else, so we'd have to top deck some really good stuff off the Ingo. Yeah, this is a Gardevoir, Sylveon. Oh man, and we're gonna have to get rid of the Zeb Stryka if we want to uh, get do the Ingo. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no choice here. That's what we're gonna have to do. So, yep, yeah, let's do that. We're gonna Ingo. Uh, the Wonder Slabber does not affect Gardevoir Sylveon, so let's go from bottom. Okay, cool. So we got two Blitzels. Alright, sweet. So we're gonna Sightseer away the two escape boards, and uh, maybe we should attach an escape board, actually, just in case. Nah, I'm probably gonna die eventually. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how our next hand goes. Um, but I don't know. See, this is a matchup that is actually quite tricky, because you can't really play a charm against the Gardevoir Sylveon, because it doesn't have an ability. It's not an Ultra Beast. You know, it's not crazy. Um, we're going to Sightseer all of this way. Oh, snap! Vulpix! Oh! I needed a Vulpix, but as I'm sure I will do. I need a Vulpix like next turn. Next turn! I'm gonna Ear Ringing Bell the Wash Rotom and switch around. Yeah, so we can't stop the Gardevoir Sylveon with our charms. So we need to just get as much damage output in the discard as possible to beat the Gardevoir Sylveon, especially because the Gardevoir Sylveon charges up its bros on the bench. So it's a sticky situation sometimes because you're like, okay, I'll knock out this Gardevoir Sylveon, but then there's another one coming at me, full force. They just kind of recycle them, rinse and repeat with the Guardy boys, the Guardy crew. I like the uh, alternate art one. That's really cute. So... I don't know. This could really go either way. I think the Earringing Bell is going to help us out quite a bit. Same with the Wash Rotom. If we do get to attack with the Wash Rotom, because uh, he does attack 50 on the bench, so we are going to need that extra damage as much as we can really get there. I see Lugia. Ooh, Lugia Boogie. That's the colorless, I suppose, that was in the deck analysis at the beginning there. Or the deck color or whatever. I don't know what you call it. The deck representation before the match starts. So we got a Lugia. He doesn't have an ability. He's not a dragon. I mean, even though he technically is a dragon, but we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna have to sprint this hand away. I don't want to sprint away the Nine Tails, but I need a Volpix, so like I have to. <laughs> yeah, that works. That works. Actually, that worked quite well for us. So we're gonna Ingo away this hand. Do I want the Rotom? Mm, probably not. I'll take bottom. Bottom five. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, I don't need another Blitzel. <sighs> I guess put a bomb just in case he attacks the Zeb Striker. I don't know. Oh wait, that doesn't. Is it only for active Pokemon? I don't know. Either way, it'll it'll detach next turn. Okay, and then we're gonna just wash arrow. Uh, I'm gonna hit the Gardevoir for 50 on the bench because I'm more scared of the Gardevoir and it's worth more prize cards. So <laughs> let's do that. The fully loaded Gardevoir on the bench right now. Let's hit him <laughs> with this wash rotom. So if he attacks us, he'll confuse himself and. Hopefully we'll get a Nine Tails by next turn. That's all I gotta say. Hopefully we get a Nine Tails because he's gonna attach energy and be hitting us out for quite a bit here. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna hit us for 150. He will confuse himself. And I'll have to promote a Volpix and just hope and pray we top deck a Nine Tails or sprint into a Nine Tails. So that is kind of the situation we're in currently. So we're just going to rock and roll with that and hope we can set ourselves up for the the big dub. The big dub <laughs> The big dub <dabba> doo <laughs> All right. What you doing, oatmeal? What's going on? We got a toy helmet. I'm not a GX. <laughs> Doesn't apply. I'm not a GX Pokemon. <laughs> I always forget that, too. I'm like, oh, sick. Toy helmet minus 30? Sick. But nah, it's only if you're attacked by a GX, so. Sadness. 
So we're gonna promote a Vulpix. Come on, baby. Let's go, baby. I'm pretty sure we have like nine right now in the discard. So really not a lot of damage currently, but that's okay. All right, no, that'll be 10, I guess, with the giant bomb. Giant bomb. Uh, I guess we'll throw the Rotom down. Couldn't hurt anything, I suppose. We're gonna sprint away. I don't need the Blitzel, so. Sprint away that Blitzel. Yes. Ooh, spicy boys. That is what I like to see. And we got a hot boo too. Sick. Ooh, and another hot boo. Ooh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Hapu, get some more charms in there. Let's get an Acrobike. Yeah, I'll take that Vulpix. That's what's up. Let me toss that Vulpix out there. We got an Aether just for the for the memes. Rubbish Blizzard. Ooh, 190, big boy. Hopefully you can't hit, hit me out because you're confused. <laughs> we might see a switch into the non-confused one and the knockout, which is kind of what, am I, what I'm expecting right now. But if that happens, we'll just Aether into a guaranteed uh, Alolan Ninetales. There's still more in the deck. We have 10 cards. Unless we prize them, there should be more Ninetales that we should be getting. Hopefully, we didn't prize the Fionni. I haven't seen it yet. Oh man, I wish I had search, like some way to search my deck. Because if we prize the Fionni, that's actually really bad. <laughs> That's actually, uh, that's, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure this 120 can go to... Oh, no, I thought it went to the bench, but it doesn't. It's active. So we're going to throw a Vulpix up. We're going to Aether into a guaranteed Ninetales. Yeah, that's kind of the jam right now. I don't think I really have any other choice here. And then we're going to hit for some damage. I mean, unless we top deck a nine tails, if we top deck a nine tails, I would be quite happy, because then we wouldn't have to aether this turn. Oof, we didn't. Sadness. How many do I have? Two. Uh, I'm not gonna put that old picks down. We're gonna aether for two, and a Volpix. Gonna evolve our boys, uh, and then we're going to. Man, do I sprint? <laughs> if I sprint, what would I be trying to get? Nothing. So yeah, I'm just gonna rubbish blizzard. If I sprint, I mean, it would just throw another fairy charm in, I guess. But that's not too big of a deal for me right now. We're in for like, what, 190? I think we're doing well right now, and I really don't want to deck out just in case my Fione is prized. If my Fione is prized, we could possibly deck out. So we need to play it safe, make sure that we kind of conserve our draws here, because we are kind of at a chance for decking out, which would be pretty dang horrible. So <laughs> this is going to be a close game, though. All of his bros have some damage on him, so it's like, broski, you're about to get knocked. See you later, Alamagator. See you later. It's just tough, I think, for any GX deck to play against one prizers. I mean, he does have a two-card lead on me right now, though, so... He's doing well. He's doing well with himself here. <laughs> oh, man, the Malolana. Oh, God, I hate that card. Malolana is so good. It's so good. You just switch and heal, and it's like, Yay, everybody's happy. I hate it. It's gonna heal up. And it, what is it? I think it's like a full heal too. It's either a full heal or it's like 120 or something like that. Something good. It sucks I can't use any of my charms against these bros. Can you imagine if there was a fairy charm against other fairy Pokemon? That'd be insane. All right, we're gonna see a switch into our goob with 50. We're gonna see the knock. We're gonna toss another Volpix down. I'm, I'm kind of conserving the Vulpix I put onto the bench because I need the Fione on the bench to not deck out, so. Achoo! Achoo! Woo! Holy smokes. Alright, he's switching all his energies to the Xerneas. What's the Xerneas do? What do you do, bro? Attacks my bench? No, he's probably trying to attack with the Xerneas. I don't know why, though. 
Move all damage counters from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So he'd hit, so... Oh, that's weird. I don't know why he's moving energies to the Xerneas. Just in case he gets knocked out, I suppose. I think that's why. Okay. Will he get knocked out? No, he won't get knocked out this turn. So, I don't know why exactly that happened. Oh, you know what? He's probably going to bottle Lana now to heal up this Gardevoir. Man, that sucks. Even if I had thrown that electric energy and it still wouldn't have been enough damage, though. Unfortunately. Oh no, he- what? I thought he was gonna Malolana. Cause wouldn't Malolana- I'm kinda confused here. I- I one-shot this, so... He also one-shots me. Hmm. Man, I wish we had our- did I discard both? Yeah, I discarded both of our Wash Rotoms. Dang. That would have come in super clutch, because they hit 50 to the bench, so that would have taken out a benched Pokemon. Hmm, that's not good. Honestly, Frost Rotom would hit for a significant amount of damage here too, and we haven't seen one of those yet, so he could still be in these 8 cards. He would help a lot for this. A Frost Rotom would be doing kind of similar damage, I think, right now to... Was that 500 damage that I just saw? <laughs> oh my god! 500 damage! What the heck is going on? Okay. We're gonna evolve. We're gonna Vulpix here. We're gonna Hapu. Okay, we do have the Fiona. Oh my gosh. And the Frost Rotom. Ah, but we need the other Ninetales. <gasps> oh no! No, we should have another Frost Rotom. So I'm gonna take the Ninetales. Put the Fiona down. We have one card left. Um... Yeah, we should be okay here. How did he fully heal his bench? Can I just ask that question, please? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna get the knock on this. Ugh, I still don't think it's gonna be enough, though. Unless he's just starved of energy somehow here. Ooh, we did pull an Aether, though. That's good. We're not gonna deck out, because we do have Fione now. So we're gonna have to feed any We're gonna have to Fione up something else, guaranteed. Because... We need to use him to not deck out. We also have to keep one space open. So I really shouldn't have played that Rotom. I mean, it's not like a detriment, a horrible detriment, but still. I don't know. I, I, I don't see us winning this, honestly. There's not enough damage out put out in the discard right now. I don't see how we get more. Hopefully this is a charm, but even then I can't really discard it. I'm glad we do have that that a Aether so we can just continue, but I mean, he's, he needs two. He needs two, you guys. Two. Now he needs one prize card left, so there's absolutely no way we can do this right now. There's no way that we can win this. Dang. That's so upsetting. I'm trying to think, like, if there was a way I could have somehow figured something out, but I don't think there was. I think we were screwed either way. There just wasn't, I don't know. I don't know what I could have done different there. I had to, I, I'll have to watch it back and see what I could have done here. I mean, we'll hit this dude out, so that's cool, but he's hitting us out next turn, so it doesn't really matter either way. Just not enough damage output, I guess. I don't know if it was just luck of the cards or what, but we're gonna lose. My two, we were so close. I think it was mainly because the heals. The heals, and I think I discarded the Wash Rotoms. I think if I would have kept the Wash Rotoms and used them to attack the bench when he did have all that damage, I could have gotten the hits. So, I think that was a mistake there. I think if I would have kept the Wash Rotoms, we may have actually won that one. But unfortunately, I did not. Mistakes were made. Sadness. But that's okay, because I'm glad we finally lost one to show you guys that... You can't lose them. And honestly, I like when I lose games sometimes more than when I win games because they show me the flaws in the deck. And they show me how I can edit the deck or how I can make better plays in the future. And it just helps me become a better player. So I'd honestly prefer to lose over win because then it's helping you recognize your weaknesses and work on those rather than just being like, oh, heck yeah, my deck's super OP. Because, like, you know, obviously not every deck 
is super OP. You're going to have more decks that win over others, but there's always weaknesses in decks that you can work on. So I'm happy with that. Man, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for stopping by this video today. If you watch this entire video in its entirety, holy smokes, you are an MVP. Thank you so much, and I hope it helped you out. Hopefully you can build this deck. I love this deck. It's a really good budget deck that is so much fun to play, and you don't have to worry about energies, which is like one of the best parts of the deck. This full deck list will also be written out on my Patreon page. Thank you so, so much to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I just started this page this week and you guys have been so, so supportive. I've been sending out a ton of my boo cards to everyone. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it more than you know, my Gilbert's. I also want to mention on my Patreon page, we're starting a TCG club where we get together weekly in a voice chat on Discord and we play online TCG together. We discuss decks and just kind of conversate and talk about Pokemon. So if you guys are interested in that, that is going to be happening weekly for all my Patreon peeps. So thank you guys a bunch, a bunch. We're so close to 5k subs on YouTube. Thank you bunches and bunches of bananas. It's absolutely crazy. I had no idea this channel was going to grow as significantly as it has. So thank you guys so much. And I will catch you goobs on the flip side.